I'm Bethany from Madeline Jean Antiques and Restoration. In today's tutorial, we're going to do a fun transformation on a hope chest that I picked up not too long ago. And I'm going to show you start to finish how I'm going to jazz this up. I'm thinking I'm going to do kind of like a boho style, which means I'm going to use light colors, uh, maybe sand the top of it, put a fun, really pretty scroll stencil on it. That's what my vision is. Now, sometimes when I start on a project, I go in a different direction, but that's my vision for this piece. So welcome, that's what we're gonna be doing. And you know what I've noticed? My teenage son informed me, mom, you can tell people to subscribe to your channel. That doesn't mean they're gonna get notified every time you upload a new, a new video. So, whoops, I've been saying in all my videos <laughs> since the time I've created this channel, like and subscribe and then you'll be notified. You will not be notified. I guess you need to subscribe, which is one part of it. The other part of it, you need to hit that bell. You'll see like a bell underneath uh, my channel. You need to hit that as well. Click on it because then you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. Okay, so I just want to make that clear. Again, I'm I do pretty well with technology and all these apps and social media, but there's, you know, some things like that, which should be a given. I should have known that. I didn't know that. So like, subscribe, hit that bell, and let's get started on this fun transformation. Before we begin, this is a Lane Cedar chest. And if you have a Lane Cedar chest at home, did you know you can date well, not like take it out for dinner, but you can date the piece of furniture when it was manufactured by just finding the serial number. This serial number is usually located on the bottom of the hope chest or when you flip the lid open, it's listed there. What you need to do is read that serial number backwards and it will tell you the exact date it was manufactured. So on this cedar chest, I see the serial number um, ends in, I'm going to read it backwards. So it's February 15th, 1973. That's when this one was manufactured. So we have a vintage. I know the 70s are vintage. I don't like hearing that as well. I was born in the 70s, but we're vintage now, people. We are. Let's take it as a compliment. Positive thoughts. So this one was um, manufactured in the 1970s. It's got a really, really cool if I can flip it up here so you guys can see. Look at that, woo, that is gonna look so cool. I'm thinking I'm gonna paint this white, distress it, and then the top, like I said, I'm gonna sand, sand it and maybe do like a white wash and then maybe like a pretty scroll stencil and we're gonna get this really looking pretty. So let's begin. Okay, we are on the other side of my workshop. This is kind of where I do all of my hands-on transformation. Um, type things. So I'm going to first sand the top and the edges, get that part done. Um, the cedar chest structurally is very solid. So there's nothing that needs to be repaired there. That's why usually when I do that as well, um, I will glue and clamp and fix any thing that needs fixing. And so far everything checks out and looks really good on this cedar chest. So I'm glad about that. I'm going to be using my Festool um, dust extractor. I have the CT MIDI 1. That's what I use. I have it hooked up to my Festool ETS EC 150-5 EQ. That's a lot of gibberish, huh? But it means stuff. <laughs> so here you go. You can see what it looks like there. Um, the 5 inches is in regards to the diameter of the orbital sander. I really like this sander. Um, it really makes um, sanding a breeze. So if you're looking for an orbital sander that's just like top notch festival, festival, you can't go wrong with them. So I have 120 grit on this um, sander and we're gonna get started with sanding it. And I'm gonna put my hair up because a lot of people make comments about me not putting my hair up. So here we go. I usually do off camera all the time, but I like to have my hair down every now and then. I'm trying to put this up with a paintbrush. See if I could do it. I used to do it in school all the time with the pencil. Okay, that'll work. All right, let's get started. Yeah. 
with my larger Festool sander. This is my um, ETS EC150 and I only have 150 grit for this specific sander. So you notice I was having a little bit of a hard time removing the thick finish off this Hope chest. So I switched over to my smaller Festool. That one I have, um, I did have some lower grit. I went down to 80. That's why I had to end up going down to with my ETS 125EQ. That's this little baby right here. I've had this sander for over five years and it still is going strong. I love this guy. Anyways, if you saw that time-lapse video, like what is she doing switching out sanders? That's what I was doing. So when you are starting to sand and um, experiment with starting at a starting point, I always start like at 150 and then I work my way of like, oh, Maybe I could use 180, a fine, a finer sandpaper, or maybe I have to go lower, a 120 or an 80. This one was pretty thick, the varnish on it. So I had to use 80 on it. And I ended up sanding the sides as well and the trim. And then I did like a light sanding on the front. So what you're gonna see me do now on a time-lapse video, you're gonna see me take off the hardware, which I can access through the inside here. Sometimes you run into hardware that's attached. That gets a little tricky. So I'm going to remove those and then I'm going to clean the outside with a product called Crud Cutter. You guys, if you have been watching my channel, um, if you've been a faithful subscriber, thank you. You're going to know I am big on prep. You have to prep your pieces before you restore them, revitalize them. I know it's not fun but just think of it this way. It's like working out. If you don't stretch your muscles before you work out, you're going to pay for it. So same thing with restoring furniture. If you don't prep, you will pay for it on the other end. So I am going to clean it up with crud cutter. It's like a deglosser. It's going to get the area prepped. Um, and then I'm going to apply shellac. Shellac is going to um, block any wood tannins that may come to the surface because I'm planning on painting this hope chest a white color. So if you paint any light colors, you could run into bleed through. That's like dark stains that may come to the surface. If you've got a dark cherry wood, um, a mahogany, those are types of woods that are notorious for bleed through wood tannins coming to the surface not while you paint. Oh, this is lovely when this happens. It's when you're applying your water-based top coat. They just sneak up through and you're like, what? And there's nothing you can do to um, block wood tannins except go back, shellac again, repaint, and redo your top coat. It's a lot of work. It's a big headache. So prep, people, prep. I beg of you. So you're going to see me on a time-lapse video do all those things. Remove the hardware, use crud cutter, and shellac. Let's do it. of revitalizing this vintage hope chest. I applied two coats of the shellac on the sides, on the top trim here, and on the front, and now I'm ready to paint. Yay! So here's a tip. If you don't want to use 
your good paint. And when I say good paint, if you've bought a higher end chalk paint or if you've made your own chalk paint with lighter colors, I always paint with a cheaper paint for my first coat. That way I'm not using like my more expensive or my homemade chalk paint. So this is what I use. Um, I use Valspar Signature, love this, it's very cheap. The lady at Lowe's actually made a mistake and she made me a gallon at one time. I've had this for a long time and I keep using it and it's been fantastic as my first coat with lighter colored projects. Um, it was supposed to be $30. She was supposed to make me a quart, but she only, she made me a gallon and she only charged me 15 bucks. So I've been just using this up. And so I'm going to use, um, this shade is crisp linen, if that matters to anybody. Um, so I'm going to do my first white coat with a cheaper paint. That's okay. And then I'm going to apply, um, my, I'm going to call it my nicer paint for my second and third coats. Maybe I'll need two more coats. I'm not sure. So we'll see. So I'm gonna get started to put it on a time lapse and you guys can see me apply the first coat. Okay guys, I am done with the first coat of white paint. Remember I used um, just a cheaper white paint to do my base. Um, I make my own homemade chalk paint and I'm doing a ultra white. I want it to be really bright because remember I'm doing like a boho chic look on this hope chest. So I really want it to pop and I'll be re-sanding the top, um, doing a white wash, maybe adding some lining wax to get that wood grain to pop on the top. It's going to look really sharp when I'm done with it. So now we're going to do a time lapse of me applying my homemade chalk paint. Here we go. I probably put on four coats of white paint. With white paint, you always have to apply more just because you just need more coverage because it's the lightest color. So on the sides, I thought they were looking a little drab. So I thought, you know what? Let's jazz them up a bit. So we are going to use something. It's called like an embellishing paste. It looks like this. It's, it's like a thick medium. It's a texturing paste. It's by Maison Blanche. They also have a great chalk line and a wax line that I love, but it's very thick. This jar is pretty heavy. And what you do is you apply it to the surface um, that you wanna add a raised stencil to. So what we're gonna do, or I'm going to do, you guys are gonna watch, I'm gonna put this on the side, level it out, and then you're gonna see me run this stencil roller over it and it's going to leave us a really pretty imprint and I thought that would be a nice way to jazz up the sides because this piece is already very feminine very boho chic so let's do this next <music> Okay, here's a close up of the stencil. Isn't this so pretty? I added a layer of shimmer paint just to make these details pop. Okay guys, we're at the tail end with this vintage hope chest. So what I've completed, oh my gosh, that embellished stuff turned out so well with the roller. I'm going to do a separate YouTube video because I already had someone on my Facebook business page ask me, how did you do that? So I'll do a quick separate YouTube video from this one to show you guys how to do that step by step because I got so many um, comments on my Facebook business page. By the way, you can go here to go check it out. That's Madeline Jean Antiques and Restoration. Um, you can go there. Um, I'm talking about this 
project and how it's going with it. And I posted pictures close up of the, it's, it's like a raised stencil on the sides that I did. And then I used some, like a, like a sheer metallic paint over it and it just looks beautiful. It's like breathtaking. So what I'm going to do next, now that I've got the sides all glammed up, I cleaned the hardware. I just scrubbed them clean and then I sealed those. Now I'm going to resand the top because I need to clean it up a little bit. I got a little paint around the edges. And then I'm gonna do a white wash. I'm gonna apply a white stain. And then if I need to just add a little more punch to that white, make it a little um, like darker, I'm gonna add some liming wax into the wood grain and see if that'll make it even more of a white wash look. So that's what you're gonna see me doing on my next time-lapse loop here, just to keep you in the loop of what I'm doing. Let's keep going. chic type of look. I got this looking so nice on the top. I got um, two coats of the white stain and you know what I was noticing? It would stay white for a second and it's like the wood would like drink it up and then it wasn't as white and so I was getting a little flustered. So I tried two coats and it happened twice and then I was like you know what I'm gonna have to put liming wax on and that's what I did. I pushed it in to the grains here and it gives it this really beautiful like frosted whitewash look that's exactly what I was looking for and going for with on the top. So I'm really excited how the top turned out and I can't wait to reveal this to you guys. I'm going to do um, a full reveal here in just a moment. Okay, before I fully reveal the vintage hope chest, I just wanted to say to my current subscribers, thank you for following me with my journey, with my work, with my home, with my do-it-yourself projects. I really appreciate you watching my videos, commenting, liking them, sharing them, so thank you. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I do a couple little things here on my channel. Mainly, I refinish old and vintage furniture, and I share tips and tricks that I've learned over the years, I've been doing this um, a little over eight years and I've turned it into a little small business that I do. Um, I also just bought my first home, so I've been incorporating um, projects that I'm doing around my house and some aspirations of larger projects that I wanna do. So you'll see some of that um, in my YouTube channel as well. So I just wanted to put that out there. My name is Bethany. My business is called Madeline Jean Antiques and Restoration. It's named after my daughter. And you'll also see cute little videos of our little dog, Biscuit. He's a little rescue chihuahua. And you can find me all over social media. Um, you can find me on um, Facebook, my business page. That's here. That's at Madeline Jean Antiques and Restoration. Go there. Follow me there. I post a lot of um, projects like from start to finish. That's where you'll find my inventory, what's for sale. I have a shop section. So you can click on that and see what's for sale if you want to buy anything. Um, I'm also on Instagram and that's at bethany.yousef. You can find me there as well. And there I incorporate just funny videos, entertaining videos along with um, my projects and my work. So go check me out over there. So here you guys go. Here is the boho chic hook chest. She's pretty, right? Isn't she pretty? I'm so excited with how she turned out. Um, the boho chic look is really in right now. You incorporate a lot of whites, a lot of uh, natural wood, bleached wood, whitewashed wood, um, a little bit of glam, a hint of glam in there. You're gonna do, you're gonna see that with things. So I kept the hardware original. I just uh, cleaned it up. It's got a nice gold look to it. And then over my white paint, I added some like, um, it's like a shimmer paint. It's called, I think the color is like white pearl. And I just brushed that all over. And you guys know the sides that I did. I mean, check out these sides. I think that's what is going to make this piece so unique. Um, oh, you can't see it. Hold on, hold on. I need a cameraman, camera woman, somebody. Anyways, I'll do a close up. You know, those stenciled sides. 
sides that I use the embellish product with. Um, those turned out really, really nice. Oh, and I did a little thing. So I'm all about small details with my projects, okay? I never like to leave projects unfinished where I feel like, oh, I could add, I could add something there. So whoever buys this hope chest, look what I did here. I added a little stencil all the way around because I thought it would look nice. That area there looked a little bland to me. And I was like, if I painted it, it would look kind of awkward with this area here not painted. So I wanted to add just a little touch of a little something. So that's what I did there. So I'll include little close-up photos um, at the end of this video. So check out the close-up photos of this project. If you liked what I did here, like the video. Um, if you have any comments of any of the processes that I use or any of the products that I used, um, let me know. Um, leave it in the comment section. And if you have any questions on anything that I did, ask away. Um, I will be using for a top coat. I haven't applied yet. Um, on the bottom, I'll be applying like a clear wax. On the top, I will be doing a water-based polycrylic, which is kind of tough to use, but once you get a groove with it and you use it a lot, it's a piece of cake. So I'll be doing that on the top. So please like, please share, please comment, please subscribe, please do it all. Okay, guys. I'm leaving. I'm done. See ya.